In uh, this lecture, we'll have a look at the sample as a sequence of random variables. It's uh, common to define the sample using the notion of a population. So the idea then is that we have some set representing the population, such as all individuals in Sweden, and then we pick out a subset of this population. So we pick out a number of points in that population and that is our sample. From the sample we measure a particular characteristic of each sample point and then we denote our sample with x1 through xn. So I have a population and I, I have a sample. Remember it's common to denote the actual measurements as our sample, even though the sample actually is the uh, collection of sample points, such as the collection of individuals. One way we can look at this is that uh, before I uh, implement my sampling procedure to uh, collect my sample, the values x1 through xn are unknown values. So we can say that before the procedure, the sample is actually unknown. I don't know which sample I will actually end up with. So we think about the sampling procedure as our experiment. Then x1, for example, is a variable whose value is not known until the experiment has been performed. But that's exactly what we mean by a random variable. So the particular x1, the first sample point, is indeed a random variable. The value is only known after the experiment and that's applicable to all of the sample points. So in general term we can say that xi sample point i is a random variable. So we should actually use the capital letter for the sample point xi and use the small letter xi to denote the actual value that we got after implementing the sample procedure, that is after the experiment. So thinking of sample point i as a random variable, I have a sequence of n sample points. So I can think of this sequence, this sample, as a sequence of random variables. An important concept when we talked about sampling was the uh, concept of random sampling. Remember, random sampling meant that every element in the population has the same probability of being selected into the sample. And random sampling corresponds to what's called IID random variables. So if I have random sampling x1 through xn, then this random sample will be a collection of n independent and identically distributed random variables. So let's think about this. First, random sampling means that every point or every element in the population has the same probability of being selected. That means that the uh, first element that I pick as my first sample point doesn't influence in any way how I select my second sample point. A random sample implies that the uh, sample points are completely independent of each other. If I have a random sampling, then all these sample points viewed as random variables will also have exactly the same distribution and that will be the distribution of the population. When I pick my first sample point, I pick it from the population with a given distribution. When I pick my second sample point, I pick it from the same distribution. So the random variables are independent 
identically distributed when I do random sampling and that's such an important concept that we typically just write IID random variables. We also have the um, option of measuring several properties of each sample point and then we might denote the first measurement by xi for sample point i and the second measurement by yi for sample point i. In such a setting with several measurements or two measurements we say that uh, a sample point xi comma yi say the uh, income and expenditure of firm i we say that this is a random sample if x1 comma y1 viewed as a pair because that relates to the first firm for example is independent of x2 comma y2 as a pair because that relates to the second firm and if we have random sampling they are completely have nothing to do with each other so in this sense we have n independent pairs of random variables they're also identically distributed in terms of pairs the uh, first pair x1 y1 has the same distribution as the population so will x2 y2 and so on so just a couple of implications to note when we're talking about uh, random sampling with several measurements. So the first thing to note is that if you have random sampling, then any two random variables with a distinct index will be independent. Distinct index simply means that they point to different firms or different individuals or countries or whatever we're looking at. So x1 is independent of uh, x2 but x1 is also independent of y2. x1 is independent of all random variables which has an index different from 1. So just re restating that in the reverse if you have the same index on the random variables you cannot assume independence. So if we're dealing with firms for example then you can't say that x1 is independent of y1 because x1 could be something like uh, total revenues for the firm and yi could be total costs and they're clearly related to each other since they are relating to the same firm. With the random sampling all the x observations will have the same distribution. They all have the same distribution as the population. The second measurement called the y variables they too will have the same distribution. However the IID assumption, the random sampling assumption doesn't mean that the xi and the yi have the same distribution. They refer to completely different concepts the distribution of let's say total revenue of firms is not the same as the distribution of total costs. So one question you may ask is why do we do this? What's the sort of point of um, viewing our random sample or our sample as a sequence of random variables? Well the short answer is that the population concept is a really tricky one and in many cases it's, it's very hard to visualize or even think about what the population would be. For example if you plant n plants and you watch them grow for say two months and then after two months you measure uh, the height of the plant it's very difficult to visualize what the population would be in this case. Is it the population of all possible plants that could ever exist in the universe or exactly what is it? It's, it's very hard to, to make sense of that. So the solution to this problem is just really to skip the population discussion altogether and just think of the heights of these plants as uh, 
outcome from a random variable with just some unknown distribution. So the whole purpose of this is to uh, basically eliminate the population concept from the discussion. So from now on we'll just simply assume that the sample is a sequence of random variables from some distribution and we will try to say something about this distribution based on the sample. And this will make the population irrelevant. It doesn't really matter what the population in the background is. It doesn't even have to exist. We can just basically think of a sequence of random variable as our sample. And we define random sampling in terms of the properties of these random variables rather than as an idea of how we perform the uh, sampling procedure. So try to wrap your mind around this idea of the sample being a sequence of random variables. The values are unknown until we perform the experiment which is actually going out there and collecting the sample and then it's a sequence of numbers which we can use to calculate the sample moments such as sample mean and sample variance.